my screen. So um, to get started in our agent websites, we are going to go to the consumer applet of command. So it's going to be down here in the bottom right hand corner, a little picture of what looks like a little website with a one in the bottom corner, and we will click on that. And this is going to take us to everything that's consumer facing. It used to be called sites before, but they've updated, updated the name to consumer because this is really all about delivering information to our consumers and really providing them with information that's going to support them um, and really be competitive, make us as agents be competitive with the Zillow's and the realtor.com and Trulia's. Um, this is more than just building a website. It's about providing that information for the consumers. So here, when you click into the consumer applet, you can see it's going to automatically put you into the landing page section, which here you can see all of the landing pages I've created and the number of leads and date created here. The next tab is gonna be agent site pages. And this is going to be all the pages that I've created as a part of my website. So you can see here, so as you start to build pages for your website and make it more robust, you'll be able to see all of them here. The next tab is the guide builder tab. And this is going to be the guide builder that we make for your, for your app that's also available for consumers when they log into your website. So we'll talk through that in just a minute. And then all the way in the far right is site and app settings. And this is where we're gonna get um, specific into um, specific settings for our site and app. So it looks like it is still loading. So let me just refresh this real fast. So you can see here um, in the top left-hand corner, it says use my information to brand my agent site. Make sure that you have that toggle on. This is what's going to provide permission for you, uh, or for a command rather, to use all of your marketing profile information into your agent site and mobile app. So you always wanna make sure that this is connected. Here you can see we have some general settings here. I don't wanna, I don't wanna walk through these just yet, um, but I just wanna familiarize yourself with um, this part of command. Then we have URLs, featured listings, which is brand new, which we can talk through today, theme and site pages. But to get started, let's go through building our agent site. So within the agent site tab, you can see this blue bar here and it says, see your configured agent site and I have a URL. And then on the far right, it says configure your site. Where you can click on configure your site here or scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and it says configure your site here as well. And when you click on configure your site, it's going to take you to the Kelly guide and the Kelly guide is going to be that step-by-step -step process that's going to help you build the main pages of your agent site and set it, set it live. So then you can start to add more pages to it. So I'm gonna click on configure your site and this pop-up window is going to show up and we're gonna select, I wanna use my new KW agent site. You have the option to have a placer site and I wanna to continue to use placer sites. That way, in the last one, I wanna explore other options. Those bottom two options are if you don't want to use this agent site, you have maybe a website through um, another company, another CRM, you can use those and that way you won't have a KW site prepared for you. But I want to use my new agent site, so I'm going to select that and click submit. And the Kelly guide is going to pop up. And what I love about the Kelly guides is it literally holds your hand step by step in setting up your website providing all the information that you need. Most of the information is pulled in from your marketing profile, so it's really easy. So we'll go through the Kelly guide, create our sites, and then I'll show you after this how we can go back and make any edits or changes to the Kelly to those websites. So here's our Kelly guide. It lets us know we're gonna choose our subdomain, our theme and styling, and page creation. So perfect, those are the steps that we have coming up. So let's click on Get Started.
And this is a compliance reminder. I want to make sure that we have our DBA logo, ownership statement, and everything that we do is compliant with Grec. Throughout the process, I'll be sure to highlight the areas um, to make sure that we are compliant with Grec. And then here it gives us the option to find our approved market center brokerage DBA logo. You can click on this and a new tab will pop up and it allows us the ability to find our DBA logo. I want to show you something a little bit easier real quick. I don't want to sidetrack too much, but if you go to Rawls, Rawls Group Help Desk .com, and then up here in the top right hand corner, there's downloads and then market center logos and then scroll to right here, Keller Williams First Atlanta. You can click on this and Scott Hardy has already put all of the First Atlanta logos here in different formats the black and white version, full color version, no background. So I'd recommend you get your logo from here uh, and then you can upload that manually into command rather than using um, this service here to uh, find your logo. So that's rawlsgrouphelpdesk.com. So now we're good to go here. We're gonna make sure we're compliant because I don't want anyone getting any fines from Grec. So I'm gonna click acknowledge and continue and this will load our Kelly guide. And you'll notice that as we go through the Kelly guide, it's gonna be able to start at the, at the top of the page and work our way down. So the first thing I notice here is my URL, which it says nicholascore.kw.com. You should each have a uh, subdomain URL already filled in for you. This is based on what you selected before uh, when we had our place store websites, but you can change it. So let's say if you know you change it, I want to be Nicholas Core Homes, or um, why now know that the Grec is changing from you know allowing specific words. So I may want to be the Nicholas Core Group. If you want to change it, just come over here on the right hand side in subdomain, and then you can start typing in whatever additional URL you want. And then to the to the right here you'll click claim domain so this is how you'd be able to update your kw domain name tim asked a great question where do we find out what words they accept i'll get some more information from um mike he's been really leading um that relationship with greg and providing that information he had mentioned it last week in the team meeting but basically we're not allowed to have um i think real estate, properties, homes, any, any words or language in our group, our team names, marketing, that would imply that we ourselves are a brokerage. So like I could be the Nicholas Core group or the Nicholas Core team, because that doesn't imply anything to do with real estate, um, but my LLC is Nicholas Core Real Estate Group, and that sounds like um, a potentially it could be a brokerage and be confusing to consumers. So I'll get some more information for you, Tim, on the specifics of team name setup. So over here on the right, you've selected your name. I don't want to change my name, so I'm just gonna delete group. Um, but yeah, so double check anything you want and then click confirm domain and that will make sure that it's available because there are a lot of other agents that may want something similar. Um, so find whatever works best for you. Then we'll continue to scroll down here on the right and click on the marketing profile information. So it has a drop down arrow. So we want that drop down. And you'll see here, um, most of this information is gonna have been pulled in from my marketing profile, but we'll wanna go through and double check it, make sure that it is correct um and make any changes to it that i need so first name last name brokerage this says atlanta sandy springs you can't change it i would put first atlanta but we can't change it our address atlanta and then my team or business name so you see here i have nicholas core real estate group i guess i should probably change this um but i'll do that later i want to <laughs> make sure i get all that information double checked uh, with Tim first. So your team or business name here, job title, your email address, our office phone number and mobile phone number, and then our bio. 
Now, I want to make sure that as you're going through here, you have all of your all the information for the brokerage. That is where you're going to get dinged for any compliance issues because anytime we have my name, like Nicholas Cora Realtor, our real estate group, I need to have Keller Williams First Atlanta. And anytime I have my phone number, I need to have the office phone number. So it's best to just go ahead and make sure that you have all the office number and office contact information included. So that way there's no chance of you being out of compliance. And all this information should come from your marketing profile. Um, so just add it if you need to. My quick bio that I put in my marketing profile, my license number, and then compliance legal footer. So I just put Nicholas Core Realtor with Keller Williams First Atlanta. This was just another way for me to get my name as well as Keller Williams First Atlanta on the page. You can put uh, whatever you want there. And then Market Center Brokerage License Number First Atlanta H33313. And then again, uh, the office phone number. And then we have a compliance legal footer, which we aren't required um, in the state of Georgia to have this. So we're good to go. You don't have to put anything here. We don't have to have any links to any out, um, outside websites or any additional information on fair housing or any rules or regulations in the state. Uh, and we aren't required to have those fair housing logos or realtor logos, but feel free to add them. Um, if you wanna add those, they'll show up on the bottom of your page here. So once we have everything added for our marketing profile, just click save and continue. And now we're gonna select our style and theme. So everything we're doing is over here on the right hand side. So I'm just gonna scroll down. So we have two themes. We have the red theme and the dark theme. And if you select between the two, the main difference that you're gonna see is the KW up here in the left-hand corner is gonna change from red to black. Pick whichever one you want. It really isn't gonna have any big difference on the overall um, layout and color scheme of the site. I personally prefer red. KW is synonymous with the color red. So I think it's just easier. So that way when anyone's on my site, they just recognize already that I'm an agent with KW. Scrolling down, now we have our homepage text. So you can see here, let's find your dream home. And this is the text that is above the search bar. So you can put in anything you want. Um, and as you type it in, you can see it updates. So find your dream here. If you have any specific um, tagline or anything you want to put in for your business, you can put it here. You can put I mean, more or less kind of as much text as you want. Um, find out what you know looks best for you. But you wanna make sure that the text you put here is kind of indicative that in this search bar below, right below here, you're gonna start searching for homes. The main goal of our consumer website is to provide that home search capabilities. These sites are set up to compete directly with Zillow and Realtor and Trulia and Redfin and all those other sites that when you go to them, the main action, really the only action you can take is search. And now we have access to the uh, MLS systems across the entire country so people can search for homes in any part of the country. And so that's what we want them to do when we come to this site. So make sure that your text here is indicative that they'll be searching for a home. Scrolling down, we have the option to upload a hero image and this is gonna be this big image here. So right now you can see it's the picture of the roofs. It has, the uh, command is already set up to have a rotation of four or five images. But if you want to, you can add your own. So if you have any specific branding that you like, you can upload an image here. They recommend a size of 1200 by 1200 pixels and it can rotate through. Uh, but you can see if you scroll down here, these are all of the default images and if you see one that you don't like let's say you know you really dislike this one here this current corner lot you can just click on the trash can here in the right hand corner and it will re remove that photo from the carousel of images and if you want to find um, a new image you can go to designs 
within command, there's a whole library of images and content that you can use that you have access and rights to use as a KW agent. I do want to clarify, one, I'm not a lawyer, but two, if you upload any images from a previous listing, make sure you get written approval from the photographer. My understanding is that when you purchase photos from, for a listing, that you are paying to lease those photos to use them in specific marketing channels, MLS, Georgia MLS, and not necessarily for commercial use on your personal website. So just make sure you have that permission because that could be a fine of thousands, up to 10,000, if not more money uh, for that copyright infringement. So, infringement. so just make sure that you have the rights to use any images you wanna use here on your homepage. There's also a lot of websites like stock, um, iStock Photo and other stock photography websites that you can pay five, ten dollars for an image. So if you want something from there, uh, you can get it as well. I would also make a recommendation that if you do have an image that try not to have it be too overly branded um, because this website really is all about the consumer and searching for homes. If you're sharing your website, they know, hey, I'm, a, I'm at nicholascore.kw.com. I'm on Nick's website. I don't need to have a picture of Nick and his a giant logo and me in front of a for sale sign. Like they get that they're on my site. This site is really all about them. So once you have selected any additional pictures you want to upload or delete any of the um, default options, let's continue to scroll down and then click save and continue. All right, so now we're going to start customizing our site and the content on here. So this is going to be the company profile page. There is a company profile page and then there is an about me page. The company profile is going to be more specific if you are a team um, or if you present yourself as a team. So this will be kind of, you know, for Nicholas Core Real Estate Group, this is where I'm going to talk about myself and the team and the services my team offers, you know, my team being myself and, you know, the first Atlanta office staff and my uh, alliance partners and my preferred lenders and my preferred closing attorney and my preferred inspector. So that's kind of how I can write this company profile. If you're a solo agent and you don't present yourself as a team or a group, by all means, you don't have to use this page. And I can show you um, later on how to delete it. But just keep in mind that this is kind of the difference between the About Us company profile page and the About Me page. So starting at the top, I'm gonna to click on the navigation drop down button here. And you can see here we have the company profile about me page and contact us page. So this is gonna be the navigation of when someone is on my website and I have the drop down arrow, the order in which these pages are going to be. And if I wanna reorder them, and let's say I want the about me page because I, you know, myself as the agent, I'm you know, a solo agent, I'm the most important part. I want them to click on me first. I can reorder that or let's say, you know, this really is all about getting leads. So let's put the contact us form page first and you can just reorganize it any which way you want. And we can always change this later. So don't worry. The next is going to be our search engine optimization information. And this is what's going to help our websites load in the organic search results. I do want to clarify there are hundreds of thousands of KW agents and KW websites and a lot of names. So don't expect that within like the first week or two or month or whatever, that your website is going to be the number one search result um, for your name. It will help. And by adding in the SEO information, it does help get your search page um, higher up, but it takes time for Google and Yahoo Bing to increase the search results. So it just takes time. So our page title here, um, right now has company profile, but I could change this to about Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. And then you have our URL slug. So this is what's going to be um, in the URL bar. So you can see here, it says forward slash about dash, dash us. And that's the same here. You can change that to anything you want. 
just know that if you do change it, you can't use any spaces or special characters. So I could change it you know, to about N-K-R-E-G, and you can see it changes up here. So Nicholas Core Real Estate Group. Put that in whatever you want. And then our SEO description. This is going to be the text that one, that Google uses to confirm what the site is about. So we'll want some keywords here that what the site's about to help with um, the ranking, as well as the text that will show with your search results. So uh, for me, I'd want to put um, Nicholas for, uh, let's do about Nicholas for real estate, estate group at Keller Williams first Atlanta. Realtor. So you can see here that if, if this, this is some you know really key information about what this particular page is about on my website. And if this were to show up in the search results, someone would be able to see, okay, this is about the Nicholas Core Real Estate Group at Keller Williams First Atlanta, Realtor. Boom. So that like makes sense that if they want to click on this website, they know exactly where they're gonna go. And then the last section of this page is going to be the actual content. So the page is kind of already set up for a specific layout. Um, we can make some minor changes, but it really is pretty uh, formatted already for us. So you can see here, we have a quick, quick description, then we have a headline title and description and an image and the same thing over here on the left-hand side. So to update that, click on content. And then here is where you put that information. So intro paragraph, so if you want to kind of write an over, you know, a couple sentences overview about your business, anything here, put that, put that right here in the intro paragraph. And then section one, this may be about, um, you know, working with sellers and then info about selling homes. And then you can put a picture here, a 360 by 360 image of, uh, a sold sign or something that indicates, you know, you having sold a house, something, you know, like that. And then for section two, this may be uh, working with buyers. And then a paragraph about what it's like to work with you from a buyer's perspective. So you just put, you know, whatever you want here, you can see the text automatically updates. And then add an image here of you working with the buyer at closing or something um, that tells that story. And again, that's a 360 by 360 image. Just upload that here. If you have any questions about images, always check out designs. Um, and then if you ever need help resizing images, I would recommend checking out Canva. If you don't have a, um, I log in for that. I recommend signing up. Designs does, I think, a lot more than what Canva offers from, offers from a free perspective. But from resizing photos, to, from my my perspective, it seems a little bit easier in Canva, um, which I know is maybe you know not um, the most recommended thing since I'm here supporting Command. Uh, yeah. So Tim asked, where do I resize Canva? Yeah, Canva is pretty easy to resize. And then we have our um, our footer title and description. So um, put whatever you know you want here. Maybe like a quick tagline, providing the best service in real estate. Whatever you want. Um, Nick, help you with your next move. You know whatever you know you want to put here. A little tagline. Um, we're saying about your business and you can see it automatically updates and then at the bottom of the page you'll see here that I have my Nicholas Core Real Estate Group logo and my KW First Atlanta logo that I had already uploaded through my marketing profile and this is to help make sure that everything is compliant and you can see here my phone number the office address and then the Nicholas Core Realtor with Keller Williams First Atlanta and then the information about each office being independently operate, owned and operated. So making sure that we are compliant at every step of the way. 
So once we've finished filling out the information here for the about the company profile, click continue. And now we will go to the about me page. So we'll do the same and start at the top and work our way down. So navigation, you can see here earlier, I updated it so we can move that up if I want about me first. And then the about me and then the URL slug. So if you want to change this here, so for me, I may want to put about Nicholas. You can put, you know, make it whatever you want. Just again, no spaces and no special characters. And then I want to update the SEO description to make sure that my page gets ranked higher um, in search results. So about Nicholas or realtor with Keller Williams for Anna. What you know, information any any additional information there that you want. I have a question. So, if you want to change the URL later, I, I can show you how to do that um, within the site and app settings. So, if if let's say you put in today, I, I have about Nicholas, and then maybe in a week, I'm like, actually, let's just change it to about me. I can show you how to change that later. that's outside of the um, Kelly guide. And the next is gonna be our content. So about uh, the page title, so about me, but I can change this about Nicholas Four. Our title that pulls in directly from uh, our marketing profile, bio title, and then the quick bio that I wrote for um, uh, my marketing profile. I've seen some agents that have like really built this out and done a great job. One thing that's really interesting about um, command and the way they build our websites is that we can actually put in HTML text and HTML script rather into these text boxes. So you could add some additional images or whatever through HTML if you wanted to. And then scrolling down contact and here's my phone number and my email address. So pretty simple, pretty basic, click continue. And then our last page is going to be the contact us page. So navigation, same thing. If you want to reorder anything, it's going to default to, I guess, company, then about me, and then contact us page. Our search engine, our page title, contact us, and then our URL slug. So again, change this to anything you want. Um, and here, I'm going to change this to contact real estate group at Keller Williams first. Anna. And you can always put your phone number too if you want. And then I would just, just for fun and compliance, um, put the office phone number. So you can put, you know, put whatever information there that's going to help. Um, get your site ranked higher. So then we have content. So this is gonna be pretty easy. Um, contact us. The intro paragraph, if you wanna put anything here. Um, uh, uh, get me, uh, yeah. drop me a message um, to get started on your next real estate transaction. Whatever you, you know, whatever you want to put there. And then message him. And now this is going to come pre-populated, but it's, and you can change this if you want to, it's kind of that grayed out information, but this is just kind of to let someone know in this box, what information to put there. So are you looking to buy or sell? What's your time frame? Where are you searching? What's your budget? Just some of the information that would be beneficial to you if they decided to drop you a line um, and send you a quick message. And then again, our phone number and email, and then click save and continue. And now we have completed our Kelly guide. So our website is now built. It is up and running. I can show you really quickly. Let me just come over here and then we'll just go to nicholas kw.com. So this is my website. I'm just gonna 
accept cookies. And then, I mean, it's all the websites. You know, I've made a bunch of different um, sites, but you can see here, I've gone through the Kelly Guide a couple times, so I have a couple uh, redundancies in those pictures, so or in those page titles. So back in command, we are done. So we have, if we have any questions, we can click here to get some answers. Manage sites or create more site, more sites. So I'm going to click on manage sites. So this is going to take me to um, my the agent sites tab within the consumer applet. And you can see these are all the pages that I've created. And if they have the icon here to the right with the eye icon, that allows you to preview it. So you can just click on it and it'll open up a live version of that page. Now, let's say you want to edit one of your sites. Let's say you, the About Me site, you'd think you'd come over here to the three dots and that's where you edit it, but in fact, that is not where you edit. Once you've created a site, to edit it, you have to go into Designs. So we'll click into Designs here. And then every single one of the sites that you've or pieces of design that you created will show up here. So then up here in the right hand corner, click on agent site and that's going to sort to show only the agent sites that you have available. Now there's going to be some, um, I've gone through the Kelly guide a couple times. So every time that I do the training, so I have a couple um, duplicates. So I have agent profile, company profile um, a couple times. Um, let me change this. Let's show 27. So I've gone through here, you know, company profile, agent profile. But you can see here's a date from April 21st. And then up here is the date of May 19th. So today's date. So that's going to be the best way to help you um, keep track of the sites that you build and any changes that you make. So if I want to go through um, and update my company profile, click on that. And it's going to open the page builder. And now I can start to change any of the information. I can reconfigure um, the uh, reconfigure the widgets. I can add widgets. So this is the company profile now. Working with sellers, working with buyers. Let's say I want to um, I want to add I don't know a download my app link. I can just I can drag that and add that to the bottom. So now I have that in there. So you can start to make those changes. If you want to start adding, you know, content blocks or layout blocks, you can get really, really, uh, really specific with what you do to this, to these sites. And I would recommend, so today, um, I'm going to update the name. So updated 519, just so that way I can tell the difference between the two sites. And then once you've added all the different blocks and content blocks and widgets that you want. At the bottom, go through configure widgets, company profile. And this is where it's gonna walk us through that very similar to what we just did in the Kelly guide, but we'll add in our, um, and our text here. If we wanna update or change this hero image here, you can change that. And then our sections, so you can see working with sellers, selling homes, and I can add that image here, that 360 by 360 image. You notice that since I don't have any text or any boxes, or sorry, any images, that the text boxes are all aligned left. So that will be a change. So if you choose not to use any images, that'll kind of reconfigure the format of the page, which some agents I've talked to prefer it this way. They don't like the staggered text and image. So here's where you'd update this information again. And then we'd want to go to the download my app widget that I just added. Make any changes here. It's, it's the best app 
exclamation point. And then the button text, download app, and then the URL. So this is gonna be your um, specific app you download URL, which should automatically populate from your marketing profile. And then click save and apply. And it is going to make those changes, which the only change here I think I made was it's the best app. So now I have made those changes. So I'm gonna click save changes. And I want to publish this to make it visible to others. Now, what I want to clarify is that you can see, I just, I made those updates. Here's my page right here, company profile updated 519. And I, it said, do you want to make this visible? And I selected yes. But over here on the right hand side, when I click the preview link, this is not an active sub page. So this, a while I made that page, I mean, updated that page, it's already been connected to my site. I haven't actually connected it to my agent site just yet. So no one can see it. So I just want you to remember that if you make any changes to your site or even a page that you already have live on your site, you have to reconnect that to your site. So to do that, I'm gonna come up here to site and app settings. I'm gonna come over here to page settings. All right, and that was the um, company profile page. So the about Nicholas Core real estate group which I have on here twice. Um, so I can, you know, I can come over here and I can select page or I can delete it. So I'm just gonna delete this because I don't need two of those. Click to confirm. And then I have my about Nicholas Core real estate group here. So I'm gonna select a page and now a list of all of those pages that I have in that list of agent site pages are going to be there. And I wanna use the company, company profile updated 519 and I'm gonna click continue. And then here is the page title, URL slug, and SEO description that I added when we just went through the Kelly guide. And then I'll click save page changes. So now when I come to my website, let me, let me just do a quick refresh. And then I come over here and I click on the about Nicholas Core real estate group scroll down here's my app and it says it's the best app and this is what i just added so you you see that there is kind of a couple steps that you have to go through that if you want to make any updates to your site pages that you have to go through and reconnect them in the site and app settings portion of the consumer so now that we are in the site and app settings part of the consumer applet. I kind of want to start over here in general and work our way to the right because now you all have a base understanding of the information that's included here because we just kind of walked through it in the Kelly guide. So if you want to make some brief changes to your site and not have to go through that whole process of reattaching to your site and all that, you have that option here. So here we have our agent site hero text. So this is where you can, you know, if you want to make any changes to that, you could, you know, change it. I think I put, you know, find your dream, dream home here, exclamation point. And then here are those site images. So again, it's like, ah, you know, I don't really like this one of the house. You can delete it here and you can also add a site or an image here. So you can just click upload and do uh, 1200 by 1200 pixel. Uh, image and that'll automatically go into the rotation of those here images on your website. And then here we have our download app landing page. So I'll show you that in just a minute, but if you want to update your text here, download my app to find your new home anywhere. Pretty basic. I wouldn't recommend spending too much time um, on the app download page. It really isn't a whole lot um, that you can adjust. And then um, if you have any virtual tours, so this is brand new that just came out. So if you want to link a virtual tour to one of your listings, you can do that here. So let's do um, select a listing. So right now this is going to be my the only listing that I have live because I just put one live a minute ago and it's not showing up. So I'll just select, select 
this listing and click confirm. And then if you have that virtual tour, so uh, if you've made a video, put it on YouTube or any other uh, device or platform, just put that URL here and then click add tour. And now you'll have a virtual tour on your website. I do not have a virtual tour, um, so I'm not gonna add one here. But that is what you do, so it's a great way that as you're starting to add those virtual tours and video walkthroughs of your listings to add those to your websites. Click cancel. And then let's see what is the preferences. So display Keller Mortgage on your map, on your app and site, enable that, and Keller Keller covered on the site and app. So this is the uh, Keller insurance option. Um, I always say, yeah, why not? You know, they get great, great rates, great deals. So it's always worth having that included. So that way there's just another option for your clients. So once you've made those changes to your uh, general settings, the bottom, click save changes, and it will add any of those images or change that hero text on your website. Can we just explain plain old listings? Yes, so we do have the option to do some featured listings that just became available, which we'll walk through in just a moment. So the next tab is URLs. So we'll click on that. And this is where if you want to change your domain URL, so right now I have it as Nicholas Core, but if you wanted to change, if I wanted to change it to Nicholas Core Homes or Nicholas Core Atlanta, I could do that here. And then it would have, uh, it would make me change that. And that would, it would automatically update that URL. To the right here, we have custom domains. And you see when I try to click on it, it doesn't allow me to. At the moment, command does not allow users to use a vanity URL. So in the past with our placer sites, I, I own the URL nicholascore.com. So in the past, I could use that vanity URL and anyone that went to nicholascore.com, my placer site would show when in fact my placer site URL was nicholascore.kwrealty.com or whatever it was. They are working to have the functionality to use vanity URLs, but at the moment, if you own a URL, you can forward that URL to your KW site. So if someone goes to nicholascore.com, it automatically forward, forwards to nicholascore.kw.com. On the pipeline, and I will definitely keep you in the loop because I know a lot of agents already own URLs and they want to make sure that they provide the best user experience and no one wants to go through and update all their business cards or anything with a new URL. And then the next is the app URL. So if you see here, this is going to be your specific personal app URL. And this is the link that you'll want to share with a client or customer or someone and say, hey, here's the new KW app. You want to give them this link so when they download it, it automatically has their app configured to your branding. So, which there isn't a ton of branding in the app, and we'll we'll talk through in just a moment. But this will just minimize them having to go through and select you as the agent, and then click save changes there. Next, we'll go through featured listings, and this is brand new. So. I haven't um, done this yet, so let's see if anything pops up. Maybe it doesn't look like it is working properly. So this is where if you have um, your own listings, you'll be able to feature those on your website. One of the biggest complaints from a lot of agents is, yeah, this, this new agent site is great, but what about my listings? I wanna use my website to highlight my listings as part of the reason my clients decided to work with me. So this is where you would select those listings to be featured on your website. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like it is working properly, probably still um, final back end work on this part. But just know that as, over the next couple of days, keep checking this feature and you can make sure that you add your, your featured listings to your site. The next is the theme page or theme tab. Let's see if it works. It does not look like it is working. Let me try, let me come back over here. Oh, well, it looks like command 
as a whole is not working. So let's try to, I'm gonna, let me come back over here and see if I can get this to work again. Okay. So the next tab is the theme tab. And this is where you can just go through and change the different colors. So the red versus dark, not a huge change, um, real subtle. I always recommend the red, but if you wanted to make a change, you could here. And then the last tab is gonna be the site pages. And this is where you are going to be able to um, add new sites to your drop down menu. You can reorder them. So all the sites that I've added to my actual web page are over here. So you can see I have about Nick, Tech Training 430, Contact Us Blog, Blog 1-2. If you wanna reorder them, click on these six dots here and then just drag it and drop it. And then when you click on it, you can see the information over here on the right will appear. And this is gonna be the page title, the URL slug, and the SEO description. So this is a lot of the information that we filled in uh, in the Kelly guide. So if you wanna make any changes or add any new pages to your site, this is where you'd wanna fill that in. So like here, I see, oh, my blog, blog one, I see a description, I wanna come back and update that, the score, real estate group, blog one. And just click save changes. So that is site pages. One thing I want to show you that you have the capability of doing, and I'll, I'll keep this pretty brief just for, um, for time's sake, is that you have the ability to um, use HTML script and iframes within uh, the site builder. So I know a lot of agents have wanted to add a blog to their site, and we at the moment don't have the capabilities. They are building it, but we do have Homekeeper sites so I can show you really quickly how you can use the Homekeeper app to uh, build that blog site. So let's go to Homekeeper. Sign in. So you should all have a login for Homekeeper that as of being a part of Keller Williams. Perfect. So when you are in Homekeeper and you're on your dashboard, the, on the right, there is this thing, it's two widgets. So I click on my widgets and it says my trusted pros widget. And then we'll click on the other tab. It says my blog widget. And then it has JavaScript and iframe. So what I want you to do is keep in mind the iframe uh, portion here. So now we, we need to build the website that we can put this iframe information into. So to build a new site, we'll click on agent site pages. And then I'm going to click create a new site because I don't need to configure my site because I've already, I've already done that. I'm going to create a new site and I'm going to click on my agent site and you have to click on my agent site if you wanna be able to connect it to your main agent website. If you don't, it's just gonna be considered a, a landing page and a standalone page. So click create page. And then let's give it a new name. So I'll do a home keeper blog 519. So what you can do is you have different options here. So you can take, um, you can copy the script directly into a text box. So let me come back over here to Homekeeper Professional. I'm gonna copy the code for the My Blog Widget iframe. So just click Copy. It's now been copied. Come back to Command. I'm gonna do, see, a content block. And I'm just gonna do text. I'm gonna grab that delete that copy and I'm just gonna click paste and then give it a second. And then you'll see that the iframe blog has um, loaded in here. Now, 
I said, this is all I wanted to do. I wanted to leave it. It won't let me save this page. For whatever reason, command makes you add at least one widget to your, uh, to each website. So I would recommend um, the contact form. So just drag that down here below. And there's the contact form. And then I can come over here and click configure widgets, contact, and I can make any changes to um, the, the information here. So that is one way that you can um, add this blog widget, but I'm gonna show you the other way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete this uh, text box. Let me come back over here. One thing that's really interesting that command does is that we can actually put that iframe script into a text box within uh, one of the widgets. And the one that I think is the most popular and I think looks the best is gonna be the agent profile. So if I grab this, I can come up here, agent profile. Now I'll need to reconfigure this. So I'll come down here to configure widgets, agent profile. Well, I don't need my image, so we can just quickly change uh, that image, let's do photos. This is just a random image I grabbed out of designs. Page title, blog, uh, stay up to date on real estate news. So that's gonna be my bio title. And then here I have the agent bio. Let's delete all that. And then I'm going to paste that iframe script right here directly into that agent bio. This is too much, so real estate news. And then the contact title information, so I'll just leave that the same, and then click save and apply. And now you can see my image is updated, blog. Oh, it has, um, lead role and company. So I need to update this to stay up to date on real estate news. And then just click save and apply. You see that's updated. So here it's a blog. And then that Homekeeper app has loaded within the agent profile widget, which to me looks a lot nicer, kind of it's framed and it makes more sense as to why um, these pages are loading. And now every time that there's a new post added to the Homekeeper blog, it'll automatically add it to this site on your agent profile or your agent site. So now I've saved it. I've saved it. Now I can click save changes. Yes, I would like to make it visible to other people. And you can see here's my Homekeeper blog site created today, but it's not previewable. So I have to go back through and add it to my website. And to do that, I'm going to click site and app settings, site pages, and then I need to add a new page. So I'm going to click add page and it's going to ask me to select which page I want. So I'm going to select the homekeeper blog 519. And I'm going to give it a page or a page title. So I'm going to name this Homekeeper Blog. Homekeeper Blog. And then I'm just going to name this blog just for time's sake. And then I will click Save Page Changes. And you can see here I've added the Homekeeper Blog. It automatically and it adds to the bottom of the list from the dropdown. But I want to change it. I want to make this number one. And then click Save page changes. Perfect. So now I'll show you the update to my agent site. So I'll click here, I'll come home. I'm just gonna do just a quick refresh. And then I come to the drop down. You see here is the Homekeeper blog that I just added. It's at the top of the list. I click on that. And this is what it looks like here. You can see I can just scroll through here. Um, so basically what this iframe is doing is it is loading another web page within this part of this page. So it's just taking another website and loading it 
in another website. No one's, you know, someone visiting your site isn't going to know that. So this is this is a great way for now if you want to have a blog, any type of information that you can do that. And then you scroll down, and then here's the contact us widget that I added. So that's just a great way that you can add um, a blog to your site. You do also have the capability if you are familiar with HTML, which I can show you really quickly how to do, but you can use HTML very similarly to create another page if you want. So I will show you how to do that really quickly. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna create a feature, a, a landing page for an open house that I'm gonna create for one of my listings. So to do that, I'm just gonna search here uh, for my listing, Dunn Street, Smyrna. Here we go. So now here is the listing, so it's gonna pop up. Hopefully, let's reload this. Perfect. So here is the listing. Now, to do that, I need to get a um, HTML code generator. So to get to there, go search HTML code generator. And actually, let me get rid of it. Let's just do HTML generator. I think it's this one right here. Yeah, so it's super, super easy. So what I'm going to do is um, show you how to build a site just really quickly within this HTML generator if you wanna make a specific site on your website. So to do that, let's clean this here. Um, it should clear everything. Well, you know what, I can just do this, control all and delete. So this is gonna be the, the code over here um, and this is where we'll edit it. So um, to do this, I'm gonna start just by, to make it pretty simple, I'm gonna add a table. I'm just gonna do a one by one table and this is just gonna make it easy to uh, hold everything within the site. So I'll come over here, let's do table properties now width, you don't actually want to put a pixel in. We will want to do 75% and then we'll do alignment in the center. And this is going to make sure that because our website is responsive, that regardless of if it's on a computer, a tablet, or a phone, that the content that I put within this uh, table will always be within 75% width of the site. So I do that, click center, and then click apply. So here is my table. Now I wanna add some text to that. So let's do um, text and let's do format. I guess we'll do, let's just do this. We'll do open, oh, my cap locks are on, open house. And then we'll want to center this. And then where is our format here? We we'll want to make that a header one. And when you do the format here and you select heading one, that is specific code. So when it loads on our site, it'll give it that heading one um, size and format that are, is a part of the Keller Williams command websites. And then below that, I want to add a picture. Now the thing with, you, with using HTML is that we don't actually upload the picture here this is just gonna use code to pull in the picture from another website. So to do that, I'm gonna come back over here to my website where I pulled um, my listing, and then I'm going to click, right mouse click on, actually let me click on, click on the image, and now I'm gonna right mouse click on the image, and I'm gonna hit copy image address. I'm gonna come over here, to the HTML editor, and I'm gonna click here to insert edit image. I'm gonna do source. I'm gonna click, I'm gonna paste that there. And you can see here, dimensions automatically low with constrained dimensions. 
delete both of these and then do 100%. And what this is going to do is that this is going to make sure that the image that is being pulled in is going to be the full width of this uh, cell that's going to be 75% of the width of the page, which I know it gets kind of confusing, but we want to make sure that this image shows up properly. So I'm going to click OK, and that is going to load that image there. And I'll come below it and I'll click Enter, and then we can quick type in the property address. So Smyrna, Georgia 3080. And we actually want to make this a link. I want to come back over here. Um, to this URL um, and I'll click right here and I'll copy this URL because I want if someone is on this URL that they can click directly to this listing. So I'll come right here, I highlight the text and then I'll click insert edit link, URL, target, always select new window because you want them to open a new window. Things get kind of confusing when you try to load a window within the page. So click new window and then you can see that is now um, hyperlinked. And then let's come back over here and we can just grab, uh, grab the text from this. And then I will paste that there. But we want this to look a little bit better than that. So let's, um, we'll select the text and let's come up to editing and let's have it justify um, so it takes up the full, the full width. So perfect. So now we've kind of created this quick open house page. Now we need to go into command and um, build build the page. But first, I'm going to come right here and I'm going to select all of this information on the right hand side and I'm going to copy that. So just hit uh, Command C, copy that. Come back into Command over here. Do agent site pages again, create a site on my agent site and then create page. And I'm going to name this 3354 Dunn Street Open House. And then I am going to come up here to content blocks. I'm going to grab the text box. delete that text and then just hit enter and then give it a second and it's going to load. Now it doesn't look like it is loading properly, but just it's just fine, I promise. Um, and then widget, let's do the download my app widget. So I'll just put, put that below, perfect. And then I'll do configure widgets, download my app, Everything's good to go. Save and apply. Save changes. Yes, I would like to make this visible to others. Now you can see I don't have a preview button here, so I have to add it to my website to be actually visible. So again, do the site and app settings. Click site pages. Click add page down here in the bottom left hand corner. I'm going to select a, the new open house page I just made. You know, um, open house, house. I'm just kind of breezing through this just for time, but you know, SEO description, update, whatever you want. And then I'm going to click save page changes. So I'm going to come to my website. Let me click home. I'm gonna do a quick refresh. And then I come to my drop down. I've added the open house tab right here. So I click on open house. And then you can see here is the page that I built within that HTML builder. So open house, you can see it's center justified. It takes up 75% of the screen. And then here is the text. Looks like there's a little issue there with the coding URL and you can change the size of the font. And then here is my download my app. So that is another way that you can build pages and get really creative by using an HTML editor 
um, and simply just copying that HTML into um, a new into a text box on um, within the the page builder. The next thing I'm gonna talk through is landing pages. So before we move into landing pages, any questions about the agent site, editing uh, the pages, making new ones, adding a blog or HTML? I know there's a lot of information that we went through pretty quickly in just over an hour. So I wanna pause here to see if there are any questions before we jump into landing pages. I see you have one here. All right. So let's go uh, into landing pages and then spend a little bit of time here and then we'll jump into app, into the app, which I know everyone is really interested in. So landing pages are gonna be different than your agent site page because these are gonna be standalone pages that are gonna be um, really, really focused on one piece of content. Most commonly, these are used for listings. So you can see here, I have you know my listing landing page. Um, I would talk with another agent that is doing um, for her the farm the neighborhood that she's farming. She created a specific landing page for that farm that she can share with them to exchange information. They can submit questions. Um, so it's really going to be that one particular piece of information. These are going to be great to share on Facebook. And if you're using um, any of the Facebook ads through command, this is going to be a great. URL landing pages send them to so that way you don't have to send them to a Zillow link or an FMLS link. You can send them to a fully branded website that contains all the information that they need. So to build a landing page within the landing page tab in the right hand corner, create a new site. And this is where we'll select as a standalone page. And that's going to let us know that it's going to be a um, landing page and not a new agent site page. So it's going to be very similar uh, to the page builder that we were just in for the agent site with our widgets and we can configure them. Um, so we'll walk through that. So let's give this a new pay, uh, a name. So it'll be um, landing page 519. Name it whatever you want. Um, something that you're going to be able to remember. So I'm gonna use this for a listing, so I'll show you how I'll build that. So I'm gonna start off with the branded header widget, and this is gonna be at the top. Um, there's gonna to be some text here that I'll be able to add to kind of give it a page title. Uh, I wanna use this for my listing. So the next widget I wanna grab is the listing, listing widget. And as you're building this, you'll notice there'll be some default information, and this is gonna to default to a bunch of information in Austin, Texas, which is fine, because we will go through uh, shortly and configure those widgets and get all the right information in there. So here is the listing widget. And then below that, I wanna add the market snap widget. And I really like the market snap widget because it just kind of gives a, a brief overview of the neighborhood, um, the amount of listings, what's sold, some information about the area. So I'm gonna add that. And as you drag it over, just bring it to the bottom of the page. And this is gonna help show you know, the health of the neighborhood and really present you as the expert. I have all this information about this specific neighborhood. Then below that, I wanna add the lead form because I want someone to be able to reach out to me. So, if they're interested in this house. So I'll add the lead form. But then also, they can download my app. So I'm gonna add the download my app widget as well and just drag that to the bottom. Perfect. Another thing they have here is a video widget. And I wanna point this out. I don't have a video for my listing, but if you do have a video, this is how you would use that. So you'd want to um, you know, drag, we can just drag the video widget right here and it would appear right here. So we would put in the URL in just a minute to add that video. Um, so that's what you would do for video, but I want to delete it because I'm not going to add that today. So I've gone through, I've added all of the widgets. If you want, you can go through, there's a bunch of content blocks. 
Um, if you want to get really fancy with this and lay out blocks, if you want to some add, some add text or make some sections, you can play around with this and make this as personalized as you want. But for simplicity, I just want to add the widgets because I think that provides the cleanest look uh, for my widgets. So once I've gone through and added everything, I'm going to click configure widgets. Let me come back here. I'm going to start at the top. So let's start with the branded header. So the header text, this is going to be kind of the page title information. Uh, new listing. Uh, let's do Myrna's. I could spell Smyrna's newest listing. And then I have my headshot and my information that's going to be pulled directly out of my marketing profile, my team logo. Perfect. And then click save and apply. So now you can see how that, the header updated. So it's Smyrna's newest listing. So someone knows when they're on this website, this is going to be all about Smyrna's newest listing, which is my listing. So if you know anyone moving to Smyrna, send them my way. Next, I'm going to select the listing. So click Browse Listings. And then just type in the address. Click Search. And it will pull up all of the listings that match. Now I do want to point out something very quickly, which seems kind of silly, but when you are selecting your listing here, I'm going to recommend that you select the Georgia MLS listing and not the FMLS listing. Because when you input your property description in FMLS, <clears throat> there's, they don't allow as many characters. So now they have the two boxes for the description. Well, what happens is when that is being uh, syndicated out, it only pulls in the information from the top, the top description box and not the bottom one as well. So it'll make it look like your description is cut off. Whereas in Georgia MLS, the text, the description box allows for more characters, so you don't have to worry about that. So as you're going through, double check the MLS number or the MLS listing. Um, you know, Georgia MLS is always usually going to be an eight or nine and FMLS is going to be in the sixes. So I would select this one here. So it's going to be my Georgia MLS listing and click select. Then we'll be able to select the header image. So what's going to be the main image that they see? It'll default to the first image from MLS, but this is going to pull in all of the images from the listing. So once you've selected your listing and your image, click save and apply and it will update the listing uh, on the landing page. So scroll through here, here's the listing photo. Scroll down, all the information about the property. You can see here's the full listing description, no issues there. And it's going to have the carousel with all of the images from the listing and all the details. And then we need to go through and configure our next widget, which is going to be the neighborhood trends. Right here, you can see it says Barton Hills neighborhood trends. Again, this is an Austin neighborhood. If you update the header here, it's going to remove what I like about this is the neighborhood being in black text and neighborhood trends in blue. So I recommend you don't update the header and then just come here to postal code and type in your postal code for your listing. And then a list of all the neighborhoods is going to show up below here. So just scroll through and select the neighborhood that your listing is in. So for me, this would be Forest Hills and then click save and apply. Scroll down, double check. And you'll see here, Forest Hill neighbor, neighborhood trends. Here's an outline of the neighborhood. And then here's stats on the community. Perfect. So now I look like I am the Forest Hills expert and I'm making sure that anyone that comes to my landing page has all the information that they could want about the neighborhood. So then I'm going to click the arrow here in the top right hand corner to go to my next widget, which is going to be the lead form. It says, let's talk. I don't need to make any updates there because the only option I have is to say interested, let's talk. 
And the last one is going to be download the KW app. I'm going to update this to download my Uh, to search, I'll just do download my app exclamation point. And you can update any of the subtext and the button and then the URL, which will be automatically loaded from your marketing profile. And then click save and apply. And then we'll just do a quick once over to make sure everything updated correctly. So Smyrna's newest listing, scroll through, here's the listing header image, property description, images, details, map, and then we have our neighborhood trends, our lead gen form, and then the download my app. So perfect. Everything looks good to go here. So once I'm done, I'm going to click publish page. Would you like to make this visible to others? Yes. All right. And now it'll automatically load uh, to our list of landing pages. But you see here, it has kind of like a weird, long, funky URL. That doesn't look very trustworthy if you were to share this on Facebook or put it with an ad. So I recommend that you update the URL here. So to do that, click on the three dots on the far right and then click change URL. And this pop-up will show up and you'll see the first part here is pages.kw.com forward slash Nicholas core and a number. That's all grayed out. I can't change that, but all this text here towards towards the end, I can change. So I'm gonna del delete that and I'm going to rename it um, landing page 519. Now I'd recommend that you update it to if you have a specific listing, so this would be the address um, or open houses or whatever it is. Um, so it looks as credible as possible. And then once you've done that, click create and you can see here, it has updated that URL to landing page 519. Now, if you wanna see the landing page, just click on it and it will open in a new window. And here is the live landing page. So I can just go ahead and share this on Facebook. So it looks just like it does in the page builder about the property, the carousel, all the details, our neighborhood trends, our lead gen form. And then once you click on that, once you click on the I'm not a robot, then the send button will appear. I've had some questions about that from agents. So just note that, that if you don't see send button, that's why. And then the download my app. Perfect. So that is the landing page. Now you can do the same things within landing pages as you can do with the say, agent site pages in regards to using HTML or iframes. So you can get really creative um, and take as much time and edit them as you want. Play around with it. Um, and I do have a class that I taught a couple of weeks ago that gets really in the weeds of how to build these agent site pages and how you can edit some of the font colors and font sizes. Um, so check that out. That's on the KW First Atlanta YouTube channel. So that is how to build a landing page. The next thing and last thing I want to talk through is the Keller Williams app. Any questions before we jump into the app? All right. So the app, this is going to be, I think, one of the biggest game changers for us as agents um, and the way that we provide search capabilities for our clients. Now, if you haven't downloaded your app yet, I'd recommend you do so. Um, to, the easiest way to find your app URL is gonna go to consumer and then click on site and app settings and then come down to the URLs tab. And then here is your app URL. And if you click copy, I'll just click right here, go to this window and then go to this URL this is going to be your app download URL page. You can see here, it's got my little picture. And then you can send the link um, to your phone. So I can send, you know, 414-8238, send link. 
and then I should I just received a text message so here is what the text looks like. I apologize, this is not the best user experience for you. But you can see it says, click here to download Keller Williams, and it has a URL. Uh, and if I click on that, it'll take me right into um, to open the app. So I've already downloaded it, so the app will automatically appear on, um, automatically load. So this is gonna be the page that you'd um, share with your clients they can just go into the App Store or Google Play um, and download the Keller Williams app, and then they could go through the process of manually searching for you as their agent. By providing them this URL, it just takes a lot of stress off of them having to find the agent, because to, them, to most consumers, they don't care who the agent affiliated with the app is. They just want to search and have access to all those homes and find the, their new home. That's what they care about. And that's what this app is really focused on. So if you send them this URL, it just makes it that much easier for them. And then when they log into the app, it'll connect to command. So if they use the same uh, email address, it'll connect to their contact in, com in command. And you'll be able to see all the houses they look at, all the searches that they save, everything. So it really gives a full 360 experience for us to say, hey, I saw you were just looking at some homes in Sandy Springs. When you and I originally talked, we were talking more about the uh, Peachtree Corners area. Are you guys changing your mind? And you can, you know, provide have a really uh, educated conversation with your consumers and your clients to show that you care and you're paying attention and you really want to make sure that you're providing the best service. So this is the download URL. The next thing. Um, within command, I wanna talk through everything within command before I actually start to play around with the app on our phone and then show the contacts. Within command, um, really the only thing that we're able to update for the app is the page builder. Or sorry, I apologize, the guide builder. The app is set up to be all about searching for homes. When you open that app, it is right there on a the map. It shows all the nearby listings. It doesn't have a lot of information and brand, branding information about us because that's not what consumers want. But we do have the ability to create these awesome guides. They are already built for us and we can change them. And this is going to be used for our clients, especially once we get them in the process of buying or selling, that they can check on their phone, okay, I've just filled out my pre-qual information, what's the next step? and guide them through the process of buying or selling. So to edit those, you can come over here. We'll, we'll start with the buyer's guide. Click on the pencil on the far right. Anytime you see a pencil in command, that means you have the option to edit it. So click on the pencil. And then you can see here, um, here is our step-by-step -step guide. Start your search, get pre-approved, tour homes. Now all of this information has been um, made, already prefabricated for you. And if you want to edit it, which I recommend you do, click on the box and then you can see here, you can start to edit the information. So here's the image. So if you wanted to update this image to something else to start your search, you could. Card title, start your search, and then card subtitle, this is going to be a quick overview of what this got, what this section is going to be about. So the first step in buying a home is for us to identify the neighborhoods you want to live in. Quick overview. Now you have the workspace text, and this is where you can get really detailed in um, the information that you provide. And one of the one thing I had heard from another agent, which I thought was a great um, recommendation, is that you can start to add information here about your preferred lender. So if starting your search, let's see, um, I think the next one is getting pre-qualified. So let me click on, yeah, get pre-approved. So I click on this. I can come over here, pre preview, why? Doo -doo -doo. This, um, for whatever reason, it doesn't have the other text, um, but you could create your own 
uh, guide step here. And in that text, um, which I'll just come back to this one, sorry for clicking around, um, but in the workspace details text, you could start to add links, um, links, email addresses, and phone numbers for your preferred lenders. So that way you can you can don't have to worry about sending that email to your clients. You can say, hey, download my app, and in the guide, you'll have all the contact information that you need for Devorah and Allison at Atlantic Bay and for Zach at Certainty. Boom. There you go. You don't have to worry about it. And you provide them with more than one option. Or if you have other lenders, you want to put it in there, you can put that in as well. But you can add that information so you don't ever have to worry about it. And it really is personalized to you. And then you can do the same thing for inspectors. So once we get to the uh, next step of touring homes, make an offer, home inspection. So same thing here. You can start to add information about which home inspectors you prefer. Here are the three home inspection companies I like, A, B, C, and add their contact information. Put some information. I would expect the home inspection to cost around $400 to $500. It'll take about three hours. I recommend that we show up for the last 30 minutes of the inspection to walk through the home with the inspector and talk through the major findings of the report. So you can put all of that information right here in this workspace, workspace text. So this guide is really helpful for you to provide that one-on-one -on -one hand holding of your clients through the process without having to actually be there to hold their hand. They have like, it can be 11 o'clock at night. They're in bed and they're like, Oh, Nick mentioned something about an inspection. Let me check his app to see if there's anything there first before I text him. Boom. I've already answered their question. They feel that I'm trustworthy. They know exactly what's going on and I can stay asleep because I have an early morning to get up and do my lead gen. So I can't be answering texts all hours of the day and calling people back at 9 a.m. when I'm lead genning. So, this is just a great way for you to um, use this guide, have all that information in the hands of your clients. So that's how you update those steps. And then if you wanna add a step, just scroll all the way to the bottom and then click add a step and fill in um, the information here, new step for a test uh, and just fill in, you know, whatever you wanna put in here. Uh, this is for testing and then we'll add an image so let's i'm just going to add this image here oh, let's spell correctly uh, and then click continue so now it has created the step so i click on the step and now i can come over here and i can fill in all of this information to be seen and once I'm good here, I click save changes. And now I have a new step, but it automatically defaults to adding this step on the bottom. And this, I want this to be, um, I want this to be the first step. So I'm just gonna drag this all the way up to the top and then click save changes. Perfect, good to go. And then if you want to delete it, if you want to delete it, there's the little trash box in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to delete this for today and then click save changes. And then we also uh, have an introduction. So over on this tab here for introduction, you can click on this. And this is just going to be a quick introduction of your timeline guide for the buyers. You can update this information to say whatever you want. But it's just to kind of let them know and set expectations. So, hey, here's your guide. It's going to walk you through the next couple of weeks of the transaction and what to expect and any uh, recommendations or lenders or partners that you're going to need throughout the process. Save that here and click Save Changes. And it's going to be the same process for the seller's guide as well. There have been some issues with agents making updates to the buyers and sellers by guide and then not updating properly on their app labs is working on it they they know it's been a pretty widespread issue and they're getting those updates so you should start to see 
any updates that you make to your guides within command show up on your app. And if you don't see any, I recommend that you su su submit a support ticket to command to let them know um, so they can get that update pushed to your app as soon as possible. Any question about building and updating the buyer, the buyer's and seller's guide? All right, so now we'll kind of jump into the app. So hopefully you have downloaded the app. And when you log onto the app originally, first log on, it's gonna put you right into the search screen. So we're just gonna be playing around with this as if we are our clients. So search screen, there are so many different search capabilities. You can search um, with the address, the city, school, zip code, um, and then you can sort by um, price, bed, property type, and then also very similar to um, Zillow, we have the capability of drawing an area. So if you want, you can, there's, you click the draw option and then you can just draw on your phone and it will show all those homes for sale within that area. Then let's say you, your clients really like this search there's a save button in the top right hand corner. They can just click on the save button and then I can rename it. So it's gonna to default to drawn area, but I can just save it as test uh, 519. Click that and then just click save. Perfect. And now that is, I have a saved search. And so at the bottom of the screen, there's a bunch of different toolbar or in the toolbar, there's a bunch of different icons. I can go to the saved search icon and I will see I have a new safe search called test 519. Back in um, the search side, if I click on a listing, it'll pop up. You can scroll through it. Here's all the information. You can heart it. Oh. Um, you can save it. So I could save this listing if I want to. Click save, Boop. and it's, it'll just save a default under um, Nick's favorites, but they could cr create a collection. So if there's a specific neighborhood that they love, so let's say I'm working with someone that's really, really loves Horseshoe Bend, I could, they could create a collection called Horseshoe Bend of all their favorite homes in that neighborhood. So just click save. Then also at the bottom, I wanna hi highlight um, the schedule video tour. And we mentioned this on uh, team meeting, but this is a new update given everything going on with COVID-19 and protecting your safety as well as our clients health and safety. They can request a virtual uh, video tour. So let's say they're going through here and they find a house they love. They can click the schedule video tour button and they can go through and select three different dates and times that would work well for them to have a video tour. And this video tour isn't a URL uh, on your app, on your website that you can send them and say, hey, here's the video. This is a, a showing where you as the agent actually go to the house and you will use your phone to give them a tour. So to do that, they'll select their dates and times and then scroll down. And then what type of tour are you interested in? So this would be video. It's going to default to uh, live video, but it could say in person if they want to show up. And then it gives you the preferred video platform. So you have Zoom, FaceTime, Google Hangouts, Google Duo, Facebook Messenger, or other. So depending on what phone they have or capabilities, they can select that. So for me, I would select FaceTime. And then once I do all that, they would, collect, they would select Schedule Video Tour, and that would automatically send you a notification that says, you have clients that want to see this house over video at a certain date and time. So I thought that was a um, really great update to show that, hey, we are on, staying on the forefront of making sure that our clients continue to buy and sell their homes and maintain um, their health and safety. Then on the, going on the toolbar to the right, we have our feed. And this is just gonna be um, a timeline of all the activity that I have done for um, my, my app. So you can see here it's updated my timeline, updated guide, 
all that stuff. So everything we just walked through just a couple minutes ago shows that I've updated. So that way they know that um, they have a new step or something in the guide for them to do. The middle icon is going to be that guide. So you can see here where it's, you know, shows up, start your search. And this is, you know, you click on, they click on it and it loads all of this additional information. And this is where, um, oh, excuse me. This is where if you put that information about your preferred lenders or inspection, inspection companies or closing attorneys, that would all appear here. And then once they've completed this step at the bottom right hand corner, they can select mark step as completed. So I will now be notified as their agent that they have already started their search and we know where they want to go, what neighborhoods and parts of town. And then, you know, they have the buying and the selling guides. So you can see here, you know, I've made some changes to the selling guide and you can tell by that first picture, this is something I updated in a previous training. So it is, you know, starting to update. The next button is going to be the saved button. So this will be collections. So um, the homes that I have saved that I like, as well as recent saved searches. So if I, as, as the client, I can just click on this save search button and it will automatically load all of the homes for sale within those search parameters. So for me today, I just set up that drawn area, but I could go search um, by the number of bedrooms, swim tennis, um, different information there. And I apologize that this is like not the best user experience for you looking at me use my phone. But I hope that you are following along on your phone as well. And then the last button is going to be the more button. And this is where you're going to see your branded information. At the top, you can see I have my picture and my name, and that's all it's gonna show of me as their agent. And they can click to view my profile. And this is gonna be my marketing profile that I set up in command. Perfect. And then they can refer me at the bottom, which is great. And then um, they also have you know, information they can share this app. I wanna point out that you should have downloaded your app on your phone and logged in as a client because next time someone's like, oh yeah, Nick, send me your app. Rather than having to go through and send that URL that I showed you earlier, I can just click right here on the share, my K share the KW app, click on that and it pops up where I can just send a text message and I can send it to people that I've messaged with recently. So that'll send a link uh, in a text message directly to my contact. So about, that'll be the easiest way um, to share your app. And then we also have Keller Mortgage and Keller Covered, you know, our options there, which I think is great to have this here. So you can always let them know, check out Keller Mortgage. It could save you thousands of dollars on closing costs and any fees. Um, so it's always worth checking out as well. And then, um, we have, um, if they want to add a co-buyer and some information there. So you can see this really is all about providing um, that great user experience for our clients. And it's going to be really focused on um, them having the capability just to search for homes and then have all the information that they will need to go from start to finish of the transaction. So I put my phone down, but what I want to do is I want to show you in command what I will now see as my contact card. So I'm logged in as myself. So I'm going to search for my contact. So search for Nicholas. Now you can see here is my name and I have a green check mark next to it. That means that I have logged in to the app using this email address. So this is going to be how you can tell if your contacts have downloaded your app. And especially if it's your client, you'll want them to have downloaded the app as well. So if I click on my name, it'll take me into my contact card. And then you can see here, the time on here on the right shows I've completed this step of my buyer's guide. I've also created a collection and here are a bunch of homes um, in that collection that I've viewed. I created a save search. I can click on that search. And this is, it gives me the details. So it's in the Glenridge area, price between 330 and 850, beds two plus. So 
this is how you can go through and see all of that information um, that is added to uh, the save searches. So this is all within timeline, but you can come over here to the save searches tab and that'll show you um, the save searches that I've created. And I can edit it too. So if I, well, I guess this isn't letting me, but um, so you can see how you can stay on top of all the information activity that your clients are doing in their mobile app. So that's why when you give them a call and say, hey, I saw you were looking um, in Sandy Springs versus Peachtree Corners, what's going on? Or did you see a home? And you can get that information that way. Any questions about the mobile app? I just went through a ton of information between um, our agent website, making custom pages, landing pages, and our app, updating the buyer's and seller's guide, as well as walking through the platform uh, on the app. A lot of information. So I'm here to answer any questions. We still have uh, 17 minutes left, so I wanna make sure uh, I can answer any questions that you have. All right, well, doesn't seem like you guys have any questions this morning, which is fine and great. As you start to play around with building your agent website and customizing it and the app, let me know what questions you have. Don't hesitate to reach out. You can always send me an email or a text. Uh, I'm here to help in any way that I can. Um, and have a great rest of your day. And I will talk with you all soon. Thank you.